mother needs food for her cubs, and any carcass will suffice. Habitat is no place for lions to feed. Both mothers, croc and lion, may lose the carcass. It's dangerous to get too close to a hippo. They can bite an intruder clean in two. A cub's hunger trumps the danger of crossing. The standoff lasts for hours. should be a free lunch, but the pride has paid dearly for their feast. One lion will never eat again. The cub's mother may have crossed an angry hippo. days are over. She can't even take a drink. It's just a matter of time. The Katuma's residents have polished off the hippo banquet. Even the hide will soon be gone. Nothing goes to waste, especially as the zone of life shrinks. depth of the dry season, the Katuma shrivels to a string of pools. A buffalo cannot go more than one day without water. To get a drink, another mother must face a predator. Cape buffalo are one of Africa's most dangerous animals. They stick together, catch one, and the rest 
may come after you. A buffalo can weigh four times as much as a lion and outrun it. Despite the risks, lions seem to crave buffalo meat. Lions usually hunt under cover of night, but when the dry season brings abundance, why wait? Dead buffalo can still spell danger. Like hippos, buffalo are sore losers. Buffalo are known to mob lions and stomp or gore them to death. In all of Africa, crocs may be the largest creatures that build homes. Shelter when the good times turn bad in this remote wilderness. Katavi National Park in western Tanzania. A paradise four times the size of Hong Kong, but rarely seen by man. Flows the Katuma River, the lifeline for everything that swims, crawls, or walks. Right now, the croc caves are underwater. It's May, the wet season. The mating season. She's waiting to see who comes courting. fight over the privilege. To deter rival suitors, the dominant male may use intimidation. With the rivals out of the way, he can work his charms. Circling and rubbing is croc foreplay. Mating can be a sprint or a marathon. Meeting season for her too. But only one male has the right. The bull who rules the herd. He's territorial, though his turf is tiny. Maybe a few hundred meters long. But he jealously guards every inch.
Poetry exists for one reason. To defend his harem against bachelors. Hippos don't look like fighters. But they're one of nature's most aggressive animals. They can often settle a fight just by comparing weight and tusks, but this bout draws blood. The challenger has second thoughts. his prize. Hippos do most everything in water, including breeding. Her nostrils close to keep out water. She can hold her breath up to five minutes. Months from now, in the middle of the wet season, she'll give birth. Her babies will also appear, hatching from this nest, if they're still here. Each time she turns her back, a predator appears. her eggs warm. If the ground gets too hot, her wet body will cool it. Adults themselves carry a built-in shield against drying out. A thick, scaly hide, in places as tough as bone. But in a place where the mercury hits 35 degrees, even a croc can overheat. Like all reptiles, she uses her environment to regulate her temperature. While 
while she cools off, danger returns. knows another mother with eggs, the thick knee. To defend their eggs, thick knees take on all comers, even outside their weight class. have been around since the days of their distant cousins, the dinosaurs. More than 200 million years. And nature designed them so well, they've barely changed. The Nile crocodile is not only Africa's largest reptile, it is one of its largest predators. But she doesn't waste energy stalking prey. She just waits. Large mammals form part of the mother croc's diet. These neighbors don't migrate. They just graze around. When one patch thins out, Impala move on to the next. The wet season is ending, the land is drying out, across the river the grass is greener. Her eyes and nostrils sit on top of her head so she can keep a low profile. under to drown it. It is ideal for her kind. Calm water makes breathing easier. Crocs also move easier in water versus land, so they burn less fuel. Turn the croc mother is good for the river. She helps keep the catfish down. If unchecked, they would decimate the other fish and upset the entire ecosystem of the river.
father performs another vital service, cleansing the river of a source of infection. Rotting flesh. She grabs a bite by rolling her entire body to twist off meat. She can't chew, so she swallows her food whole. Several crocs will feast on large prey without conflict. The mutual tugging helps dismember the carcass. Job well done for the sanitation squad. The Katuma is ideal for this mother too. Plenty of food for a vegetarian. And in the wet season, plenty of cover from overheating or drying out. Adult hippos are too big for most predators. They tend to die of natural causes. Once again, the cleanup crew is just doing its job. A job that others envy. In Katavi, the dry season hits bottom. Yet the riverbed still holds food. Insects hiding in the mud. Velvet monkeys manage just fine in the dry season. They rarely drink water and they usually find food. Even undigested morsels within elephant dung. Remember, nothing goes to waste. But how long can a puny puddle sustain a thirsty crowd? That's the riddle of the sands. They hold underground springs. Those springs feed mud holes that sustain life through the dry season. Mother's herd is joined by others from along the river. More than 500 hippos may share a single pool. Mud. Nature's sunscreen. closer than ever, but by some strange truce they coexist. Like hippos, crocs take cover. In these lean times, they survive thanks to a phenomenon called estivation, the dry season version of hibernation, a time of fasting, and then built to fast. Of all vertebrates, crocs have the most acidic stomach known to science, so they can digest most of what they eat, bones and all. Our mother looks lean, but she stores more than half her calories as fat in her gut, back and tail. While some crocs dig in for the lean months, she has other accommodation. Unlike river dwellers, crocs have a dry season retreat. 
Her cave is built underwater during the wet season while the mud is soft. How she knows how to build it, no one can say. In fact, the entire length of the river is pockmarked with caves. Caves can extend more than 10 meters deep, and a hundred crocs may share it, reusing it year after year, as long as it lasts. With all her fat, she can go months without eating. Maybe even two years. Perhaps that's why crocs survived when dinosaurs perished. Here she waits for the clouds to burst and her eggs to hatch. In Katavi, October brings the short rains. The river will take months to fill up again. But slowly, the wet season returns. So does new life. In the months to come, Mother will keep it close. Predators are taking a toll on other offspring. The mother's eggs. All the babies are close to hatching. against them. Predators turn up when the croc mother turns her back. Fish eagles enjoy more than fish. By now, about half her babies are gone. The survivors are ready to emerge. She heard her babies calling from inside their shells. These jaws can bite with more than a ton of force. But they can also gingerly collect her young. All babies hatch at once perhaps arranged by tapping on their shells like cellmates to announce their breakout. absorbed calcium, their shells weaken to make escape easier. But some need help. 
she'll gently roll the egg till it cracks. Her babies are so tiny, they're even more vulnerable than the young hippo. If her young tried to reach the river themselves, they'd be sitting ducks. A lawn trap, well worn by hippos. swimmers and for the rest of their lives the river will be their home life less than 30 centimeters long. It takes three years to reach one meter, still only a fourth the size of an adult. In a few months they'll venture out of shallow water. For now they stick together in their pod, guarded by their mother. If any stray, she heads them off. For good reason. Most everything out here likes big rock. Basketball players would envy. She can leap the length of her body almost straight up. Her dry season refuge has become a sanctuary from predators. But sooner or later, her babies have to come out to eat. And predators are eagle-eyed. Fish eagles can spot prey up to two miles away.
another baby gone. Hippos don't prey on crocs. They're just nosy sometimes. Crocs and hippos enjoy more elbow room than they did in the dry season. But with so many newborns around, the adults are too close for comfort. The other mother has only one baby to watch. But the place that seems safest can turn deadly in an instant. The other hippo bands have left, leaving only the mother's herd, still guarded by the bull, still plagued by jealous bachelors. And once again, a fight breaks out. <laughs> the fight ends as fast as it starts. The bull signals triumph. The challenger signals defeat. The bull's tusks have left their mark. Oxpeckers cleanse wounds of rotten flesh and parasites. Nature's medics. But the bachelor isn't the only casualty. Caught in the middle, the newborn was badly gored. Baby hippos probably fall victim most often to their own feuding adults. Predators smell opportunity. It's hopeless. The wound is mortal. Only one question remains. Who gets the prize? pass before she mates again. Life is about to come in full cycle. The Katuma is about to burst. March brings the long rain.
its season crescendos and the river rebounds. Once more, the Katuma floods the crop caves, unneeded till the next dry season. Paradise returns. The migrants return too. living large and life is grand. In months the mother will mate again and swell the herd size by one. The young crocs have hung on but they're swimming against a cruel tide. Only a lucky few will reach adulthood. Nature rewards survivors with longevity. Nile crocs may live to a hundred. This too will pass. The river comes, the river goes. Life enters this world and suddenly is taken out. And a creature that outlived the dinosaurs takes it all in its stride, living as if it had all the time in the world.